So in today's video, we are going to talk about how a business owner can use a whole life insurance policy as his own bank or his own banking system. Today's video will be based on a real case study of someone we are working with right now, and we'll cover four main points. The first thing we'll discuss is his strategy, specifically how old he is, how much he's going to pay into the policy, and how he plans on using the policy for his business. Then second, we'll talk about the most important thing, in my opinion, which is making sure he gets the most cash value beginning day one with his policy. If we mess that up, everything else falls apart. Then number three, we'll talk about the pros and cons of whole life insurance and specifically using it for your business. And then four, we'll look at the end result. So to begin, he's interested in a whole life insurance policy primarily for the cash value. He's expressed, I don't really care about the death benefit. I'm interested in the cash value because I've learned that it's a safe place to put money. I can access it very easily and my money keeps on compounding when I access it. And if I do it all right, it's tax free, which is very appealing. He's not interested in loans from a bank. He's done that before. He said, I'm not interested in that anymore. It's a headache. Interest rates are going up. If I can just finance things on my own, because right now I'm using cash to do so, that's an ideal scenario for me. So the first thing we want to hit on here, actually, before we just jump into using a policy, is why not just use cash in the bank? Especially if I'm getting a higher interest rate in my bank account than what I was two or three years ago. So let's pretend he's earning 5% with money in the bank, so his bank is giving him, him 5%. Here's why he doesn't want to use cash in the bank. If he takes money out of that account that's earning 5% for his business, the money that he takes out of the bank account, he no longer gets 5%, which I know you know how that works, but <laughs> he doesn't want to do that because the money has a lost opportunity cost. So how is using a whole life insurance policy different than that? Here we go. With a whole life insurance policy, when I access my money, it keeps on compounding. So with a life insurance policy, when I access the cash value, I continue to receive dividends on any money that is still in cash value that I have not touched, and also what I've pulled out, if I've pulled it out through a policy loan. We're gonna demonstrate that exactly in, in his policy. We're gonna look at a model. But to give you an example first, pretend this is you. If you have $100,000 in cash value in a whole life insurance policy, and you know that if you don't touch it, it'll be worth $200,000 in 10 years. So we know it's going to go up. What if I said you can use it for your business today so that $100,000 that you have access to, you could use that for your business, which you know is going to earn the highest return for you. But here's the thing. If you put the money back, it's still worth $200,000 in 10 years. So you continue to receive that compounding on the full 100K, even though you took that money out of your policy and you used it for your business. You get the constant compounding. That is specifically why he's interested in flowing a lot of money into this life insurance policy. It keeps earning interest in the policy while I can use it at the same time for my business. If I have money in cash earning 5%, I'm going to take it out of that bank account, stop earning 5% because I can probably, or very likely will, earn a higher return in my business. With a life insurance policy, I get the compounding and I can use it for my business. That right there is what he is interested in. Now, sound good? Most people, yes, say yes, however, what about the benefits to the insurance company? Because they're not just going to give us money for free. That'd be nice, but that won't happen. So there's two things that benefit them when we borrow against our life insurance policy. Number one, anytime you take a loan, the death benefit is going to be collateralized dollar for dollar. And then number two, there's also going to be loan interest due, which will offset the fact that they're still paying me interest on the money that's outstanding in a loan. I know that can be confusing. We're gonna look at a model 
really, really soon. So let's get into what we'll cover here. Number one, his specific strategy. Let's go through some details on that. So his strategy is as follows. He is 48 years old. He owns a medical practice. And in this example, we're going to assume he pays in $100,000 per year. He's actually looking to fund about eight times that. But he's 48, and he wants to fund $100,000 per year. How long? For five years. So he's not into the idea of having to pay premiums for a very long period of time. What he wants to do specifically here is put a large percentage of his profits into this policy every year, let's specify that, every year he's going to borrow 80%. So if he puts in $100,000, 80% is what? $80,000. So he's going to loan the majority of what he pays into the policy and he's going to do that for five years. So he's going to pay in how much? $500,000 total. He's going to loan out how much? Eight times five, $400,000. Now, what he plans on doing during this five year period, five years regarding the loan, he won't pay any of the principal, he'll pay interest only. And the reason why is because he's still paying this $100,000. So we can't, he, what he, what will cause him stress is paying hundred k, then repaying $80,000 plus the interest. He's like, hey, that, that's too rich for me in terms of cash flow going toward, toward this policy. What I'd like to do, fund hundred k per year, borrow 80,000 per year to cover, cover a lot of my expenses, put that money to work. During that five year period, I'll pay interest only. And then after that, I'll start to repay the loan because at that point in time, I'm no longer funding the policy. So in the beginning, money goes into the policy and premium and PUA payments, I'm maximizing the cash value. I'm taking money out. I'm also paying loan interest at the same time. Then after five years, I stop this and then begin to dedicate resources to, to repaying the loan. What we're going to look at is 100K per year. This way you can see one just redirecting the cash flow now toward the loan. You can also see what your policy values look like once the loan is paid back. But this is his specific strategy. So number one, specific strategy fund for five years, use the money, pay interest on the money that I use, and then pay it all back afterwards. Number two, how to get the most cash value possible. So this is the most important piece when it comes to any whole life insurance policy. When people have buyer's remorse, it's never around the loan. It's always finding out that they purchased a whole life insurance policy, they were told this policy is maximized for cash value, but it was not maximized for cash value. They see that a better option existed, and sometimes they see this with the exact same company and product. It could have just been set up differently. That's what causes pain and frustration in this industry. So how do you get the most cash value? What we're going to look at is the actual policy illustration here. So here we go. Here we see 100K per year going into the policy for how long? For five years. Where you can see that is over here, the annual outlay column. After the fifth year, his out of pocket is zero forever. Net cash value by the fourth year, you're 40 grand. By the 10th year, you're 651. I'm going to pull up an Excel sheet, which is this exact illustration, but 
just so you know that the, the Excel workbook is real, we just pulled the values from this illustration. You'll see this cash value and death benefit column match up dollar for dollar. All right, so here we go. Let's look at the design of the policy. Of that $100,000, this is me getting it. The question I would ask, assuming I'm you, but I know what to ask about whole life insurance and I want cash value, is this. Where is my money going? Because my money can go toward either the premium or PUA rider. If you look at a lot of the top companies, I would always recommend at least considering the four major mutuals, which are Mass Mutual, Guardian, New York Life, and Northwestern Mutual, with those four major mutuals, you can often set that base premium as low as 10%. If you push it down close to as, as low as the insurance company will allow, that'll give you more cash value up front, more guaranteed cash value long term. And when we look at real policies, not just illustrations, like what you're gonna see here, but real policies that have lived the test of time, we see also this type of setup delivers the most long-term value too, which is what we're looking for, maximize value. So we know he's paying in 100K per year. Here's the premium at 10%, $10,000. Next, we've got what is called a term insurance rider. The purpose of this is to add more death benefit to the policy, which he doesn't care about that. It prevents what is called an MEC, Modified Endowment Contract. It's a taxable event. So cash value, why people are attracted to it, safe place to put money, I can access it, my money keeps compounding, and it's tax-free if I do everything right. An example of doing something wrong is that I trigger a mech. We always make sure that doesn't happen. Any agent that you work with can easily prevent this just by calculating the policy MEC limit up front. But there's a specific purpose for that. Then we've got the PUA rider, the rest. So there's $100,000. Point to clarify here. If you own a business, is cash flow like this. Nice and consistent and goes nowhere but up over time. No. Feels more like this. <laughs> and hopefully over time it eventually levels out and you figure out the game and it goes up. <laughs> My point to that, the idea of being on the hook for $100,000 per year, in his case, he was actually looking at $800,000 per year, that causes stress. He wants to be able to hit that much, but don't obligate me to it in the event I have some down months or down quarters longer than anticipated. Here's where I'm going with this. Often what we'll do is set up a policy where we are only committed to the minimum, so in this example about $1,500, and then consider companies and products that allow you to add PUAs at your leisure. So now I know I can pay in up to 100 k per year, but I'm not on the hook. I'm not required to do that, making it very, very flexible. And then we've got our total funding, 100 k for five years, 500 grand, then your cash value and death benefit, break even at year four. The illustration, we had 651, year 10, there we go. This company has a dividend rate of 6.10%. I wanna clarify here that this is never what your cash value is actually growing by. What we have here is the net annual rate of return after all of the insurance expenses. First two years, you're in the red, mainly because the premium piece does not show up in cash value in the first year. The insurance company is going to overcharge us for the death benefit or cost of insurance up front. That's what takes the biggest bite out of cash value and is also the main reason why we reduce that as much as possible. Make sense? Because we want to minimize this. And as time passes, it will get better and better, but we'll never see it hit that gross dividend rate. I always like to clarify that because that can be an extremely sensitive topic and also very, very confusing. I see an interest rate symbol there. I'm going to think that's what my money is going to grow by, but not quite. And then we've got the growth rate, but in dollars. 
So now we're going to transition into loans. The loan interest rate in the illustration that we're going to look at is 5.68%. So we talked about how to get the most cash value just by minimizing your premium and maximizing your cash value. Your PUA rider is the key. Also makes it very flexible. Let's look at using the money and particularly the pros and cons to using the money. So a big drawback to a lot of people is the upfront hit on cash value. That is a drawback. Even when you minimize expenses, it's there. Then also the cost to borrow. That loan interest is 5.68%. When we look at the policy, 5.68% cost to borrow, first year, negative 10% hit. That means your cost, 10% plus the 5.68%. It's going to hurt us more up front than it will benefit us up front. Over the long term, though, we have to be able to make, make up for that, and I'll show you exactly how we show that with numbers, too. So let's look at the loan model. And this we also pulled from the illustration. So, <clears throat> so when we prepare these illustrations, we look at loans coming out and such. These can be really wacky. But look at age 60. Your cash value is 721. Keep that number in mind. All right, here we go. So what we're going to look at here, loans coming out. This is money he gets. Loan balance. This will be the loan balance on the policy. Loan interest. If it's in orange, that's going to assume that we're paying interest only, or this will isolate just the interest portion of the policy. You'll see exactly what I mean as we progress through this. Loan payment. And then also payment applied to the principal and payment applied to interest. And then our cash value and death benefit. So year two, he's going to take an $80,000 loan. He's actually going to take it year one. You can access a policy loan typically as early as 10 business days after starting a policy. We have year two here because it's the earliest we can illustrate it in the software. That's the main reason why. So. We take an $80,000 loan. Our loan balance is now $80,000. What impact did it have on his policy? Your cash value is the gauge that determines how much you can borrow. Think of it as your credit line. Pre-loan was 186. You borrowed 80, drops by about 80 in this example. I can access another 101. What happened to your death benefit? Pre-loan was 1.5, post-loan, 1.42. It dropped by exactly the amount I borrowed. You'll see that happen every time with a life insurance policy, regardless of the company. So he's going to continue to take $80,000 loans. On the illustration, we now see the loan interest come due. So the loan interest at 5.68%, this is in the loan balance for the prior year. So on our anniversary date, so when the next year's premium comes due, the insurance company will send us a bill for the loan interest, which is why we see it the following year. We've got other videos that provide details on how loan interest works and such. But in orange, the loan interest comes due. In light blue, We've got our loan payment. So the interest comes due and he pays it out of pocket. So what he pays here now is the 100K plus the interest. What was his net cash flow going into the policy? 100 minus 80 would be 20,000 plus 4,500. So call it 24,000, 544 the net cash flow that went into the policy year three. Okay, so we're going to continue this cycle. Five $80,000 loans. There's $400,000. Year seven, we could start paying the loan back, but I just wanted to pay interest only for five years, the years I'm taking out the loan. Everything's delayed in the illustration software one year, so in reality, we would have the interest the same years here, but I think you see what I'm doing. So interest came due. He's paying the interest every year. 
at 55, if you didn't touch it, your cash value would be 564. Your death benefit would be $2 million, and you would have received from the insurance company $24,556. You have $400,000 outstanding in loans. Your line of credit or equity is 141, so that's what you can access. You have $400,000 outstanding in loans, and your death benefit's what? 1.6. Without any loans, it's 2 million. This is what you can access. What do you still receive from the insurance company? You know? This guy right here. You continue to receive earnings on your total cash value even though you have a loan outstanding. Let's demonstrate that. So now we're going to begin to repay it at 100K per year. So here we've got the interest that comes due, but we're not going to pay interest only. We're going to pay $100,000 of which 22.7, the interest, that's how much is applied to the interest. And then the rest in purple is applied to the loan principal. And what will happen, the cash value will come up. The death benefit will too. So over here, we actually reduce the death benefit after seven years. That's something we do to maximize the cash value if I'm not going to fund it, and fund it anymore. It's optional. But that drop occurred with the non-loan scenario as well. And when that loan is paid back, what do you notice at age 60? Look at that. And look at that. So when he's used this, right, every year taking this for his business, which earns the highest return, he's still getting this. So now he knows I can get 500K in, and at the end of the road, at age 60, I've got $721,000. So, Drawbacks to this are what? Upfront hit on cash value, paying 100, can only access about 85%, a little bit more in terms of a max. Then also, the loan interest, what is it? Depends. We're going to look at the numbers when we hit on the end game piece. But those are the drawbacks. The major advantage is the fact that I keep getting this on my full bucket of cash value. When I repay it, Everything's fully restored, and here's what business owners like the most. You have complete control of how and when you pay those loans. You don't even have to. In retirement, people typically don't, but when I'm using it as my own bank, if you want to call it that, or personal line of credit, it usually makes sense to do so. So, let's hit on the end game here. What's the end result? And we're going to look at this with numbers. If you want this proven out numbers, does it actually make sense? Here's what I like to look at. And a lot of real estate investors will look like this or business owners that are very focused on the P&L, making sure that they're not in the red. Net numbers. This is the same as this. This is just, sh just showing what you're getting from the insurance company net year over year. To the right, that's this, the loan interest. How does this help? I can see every year what I'm getting from the insurance company and what I'm paying them. And we do this for everyone we work with too, so you don't have to feel like you have to do this. If you're working with a different agent, they can usually do this as well because they can produce the illustration. It's just a matter of laying it out on Excel and organizing it or whatever platform that they're using. You could do it on pen and paper and that's a good teaching style for some. But here, I can compare it year over year and simply see, am I in the red or am I in the black? Is that purple column showing a higher dollar amount than that red column? And if you don't want to sit there and figure it out, I look at this, net yearly earnings. You could also call this spread if you wanted to call it that. <laughs> and this shows you, okay, here's my net net at the end of the day on the policy alone 
because I'm using that money for my business, and that'd be a totally separate return, which is going to be much higher than this. But that is why people use it. And it keeps on chugging along as time passes when I look at the value. So I do hope that this video helped. Cool thing about him is he can continue to take loans and rinse and repeat without making any more payments. If he wants to keep on feeding it, he can. But a lot of people I have found over the years like the idea of funding a policy aggressively for five years to get that money compounding for them, borrow against it while they're funding it so they can use it for their business, then take their foot off the gas, gas regarding the funding, and begin to attack the loan. And then, then they've got this big bucket of cash value working for them. And I have a lot of fun setting those policies up. This is fun stuff. So I do hope, again, that you enjoyed this video. Let us, let us know if you have any questions at all. And as always, I hope this helps. Thanks so much.